This is the third video on Adrena-based smart cars. And so to get some history of how we got here, I'll invite you to look at those first two videos. The major change here was to drop the caster wheel and just rely on the two drive wheels. I robbed the old car to build pretty much everything you see in this car. So you're looking at the same LCD display, one of the same battery packs, and the same at Leonardo and the same MPU 6050. Now if you're looking at this video then you're probably already aware that there are many others who've already done projects similar to this. So I guess the new ad here is can you use cheap Chinese gear motors that you find on eBay for about two bucks a piece to build a balance bot? The short answer is yes you can and here's one way to do it. I started by building this simple frame from some scrap 5mm Luon that you can find at most any building supply store. In total there are five parts of the frame, but in my mind there's only three because the top and bottom shells are identical as are the two sides. There are only eight screws in the whole thing, two for each motor, and four to hold the L. 298 dual H bridge in place. The wooden parts are all held together with Elmer's glue and that's it. Most of the electronics and the battery boxes are held in place using double-sided foam tape. If you fool with RC planes then you're already familiar with this kind of tape. If you haven't ever used it though it's surprisingly strong stuff and at the same time you can pull things up and re locate them without having to drill holes. Finally, after most of the wiring was complete, I fashioned two upper bumper guards by cutting two half-inch strips from an old 3M sanding pad and then held them in place through a combination of slotting the strips to mate with the upper shelf and of course some duct tape. The golden rule here is form follows function. Toward that end, the batteries were placed high on the cart as was the 6050, which was shown in the seal shot, was placed on the underside of the upper shelf used to mount the Leonardo and LCD display. This gives the MPU a safe place to ride, and at the same time, it can directly sense the one point on the car that you want to hold still. While we watch the car in action, I'll try to review some of the issues that I ran into in getting it to where we see it now. As said earlier, the car started life with a new frame, but with all the electrical components from the old three-wheel platform. That included the 9-volt battery for electronics and the 5-volt four-cell battery pack used to run the motors, and a 298H bridge. It was hard to get good analytical data about what was going on with the car's performance, but to the eye, the motors were erratic in starting and overall anemic. Also, just locking one wheel down showed that the H-bridge wasn't delivering power to each wheel as independently as expected. A review of the 298's data sheet showed no reason for it, nor did a Google search show that this was a common issue. So I ordered two more on the chance that mine was defective. In the meantime, I implemented code that added a second PID for yaw readings and reworked the motor deadband code. Also, the car was eating 9-volt batteries, so I ditched that in favor of a second 4-cell rechargeable pack and rewired the system so it looked like a single 10-volt supply to run both the motors and logic. This had a double benefit by both reducing the deadband and giving the 6050 more range to work with. While the 10-volt motor drive was a definite improvement, the car still wouldn't balance, mainly due to the still erratic motor response. Fortunately, about this time, the new H-bridges showed up, and because they were from a different source, I had to do some rewiring, mainly to accommodate the two extra end leads needed that I had earlier been able to avoid with the old H-bridge, having its own hex inverter. But that was okay, because I found out that the Arduino's analog pins can also be set up as digital prints, something I didn't know when I was setting up the earlier car. With a new L298 in place, the motors were now running as two separate units, but still the car wouldn't balance. 
to the eye it looked like at small angles there wasn't enough gain in the pitch PID. Yet at the same time for large angles it would overreact. So to the pitch PID I added an if clause that basically boosts the gain of the proportional and differential constants for errors under a half degree. To be sure that leaves you with a lot of parameters to set but armed with this dual gain PID and some patience, a workable combination is found. Well, I think that about covers it for this round. Here's hoping that your next project, whatever it may be, returns as much satisfaction as this one did for me. And please, if I missed a point, don't hesitate to ask.